Hi everyone, it's Nisha. So today I have some new makeup to try. I'm not sure that all of it is new to the market. It is new to me, uh, but there is one thing that is quite new. So I have a new foundation, new concealer, bronzer, and so excited, new eyeshadow palette. Okay, so the first thing, I actually haven't bought it, but when I ordered some of this stuff, um, I got a sample of the Huda Beauty Glowish Multi Dew Skin Tint, and I got three colors. I've already tried one of them once, and I quite like it. So I have the one in zero to fair light. You would think it's very light, but it's not. I really, really like it. This is similar to I suppose like the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood filter was it um, but I think I prefer this it actually gives you a bit of I don't know if it's coverage but it sort of evens out your skin a bit so what they say about this this is a radiant moisture packed skin tint that brightens your complexion, blurs pores for soft focus dewy finish. So I am not sure about the pore blurring. I don't have many pores um, because I feel anything that is luminous, shiny, pearly emphasizes stuff. So. I don't think it blurs pores, but I don't think it emphasizes them either. But it gives you really lovely, healthy glow. I can see that being worn alone in the summer. I could just do concealer and leave it like that. So I really like it. I might actually uh, buy the full size of this. So yeah, I really like it. Now, I think this is quite new if not on the market in the UK because I have never heard of this one. This is the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation and I blind chose the colour. I have 6.5, I don't know if it's neutral, it just says 6.5. I think it's a bit too light. It is good for me when I don't have any fake tan and I have just a tiny bit of fake tan so but it doesn't matter so it looks like this in a glass bottle and uh, what do they say about this one this is weightless foundation that delivers 16 hour medium to buildable coverage with natural soft glow finish infused with blurring spheres to provide light diffusing effect minimizing the look of imperfections so let's have a look. Yeah, this color would be perfect if I wasn't tanned. This is not even full pump. Well, I've just pumped a tiny bit more, but it's quite thick. The consistency of it is quite thick. I'm going to use BK Beauty 101 brush. Yeah, I would agree with that, that it's a medium coverage. It's really nice. But because it's so thick, I don't know if you build it up if it's gonna look a bit cakey because it's so thick. That's one thing that I like, love about my favorite Delilah Alibi foundation is that it is very runny, the foundation doesn't look cakey, but it has so much pigmentation that it gives amazing coverage. So. You don't have to really build it up. Feels slightly tacky. 
yet it has nice natural slightly glowy finish so it's not matte it's not too glowy either because I don't really like that so so far what they are saying is right let me do a tiny bit more and I will do that with my beauty blender well sponge is not beauty blender this one is from wet and wild yeah you can build it up but I think it starts looking a bit thicker but not too bad and to be honest, for me, that medium coverage is just fine. Yeah, it's slightly too light if you compare my neck. But, you know, it doesn't bother me. I have foundations in so many different shades that I can <laughs> mix and match. But obviously, I don't want to mix this with, with any other foundation. So what I will do, I will... Um, in a description box or in a pinned comment, I will tell you how this foundation was throughout the day. So check, check in there. Yeah, but it looks very nice. Still, if you ask me, you can only choose this or the Delilah. I still choose the Delilah, but this is nice foundation. And from a distance looks very, very natural. And I'm only talking, you know, not even a meter. So like 50 centimeters, let's say. <laughs> right. Um, I have a, I think this is new. This is the Geo Forever Skin Correct Concealer. And this is supposed to be a 24 hour wear and hydration, full coverage with, without settling into your lines. I've got the color 2WO, which is Warm Olive. I actually went to the store with my favorite um, concealer and tried to find similar color. And I am really happy with that. So I pat myself on the back. This one has quite big doe foot applicator. It's very, very creamy. So it's sort of thick, but it behaves when I'm now applying it. It behaves almost like a more liquidy concealer. It goes in so nicely. I've already worn this concealer, so I know I like it. And I like the color. You know, you, you're supposed to wear concealer. There is one, one and a half shades lighter than you foundation I don't really like wearing very light concealers you know this proper highlighting because trust me if you have very very light concealer and you have bags or puffiness under your eyes that will only emphasize it so I use my concealer yes yeah, slightly sometimes it's slightly lighter but most of the time, as you can see, is almost the same shade as the foundation. Don't get it darker than the foundation though. So that works itself in the skin so nicely. Looks really, really good. Because I thought when they said it was like correct, you can use it anywhere on blemishes, on anything. Um, I thought if it's this, you know, correct concealer for coverage, I thought it would be really thick and dry, but it is not. It is really, really nice concealer. Yeah, it doesn't seem to sit in my lines. But I am not sure that this is full coverage. To me, this is not a full coverage. I've had concealers that are really full coverage. To me... It has a good coverage, but I wouldn't call it full coverage. It's lovely. 
I would say maybe has slightly like a blurring effect. It's really, really nice. Okay, I don't have a new powder to set under my eyes. I am going to use um, Delilah Pure Touch Translucent Powder. And to set my makeup, you know, I always use a Lily Lolo Mineral Powder Foundation in Cookie. But today I'm going to use something very old that has been discontinued ages ago. Laura Mercier's uh, Mineral Powder Foundation. Um, because it's a bit darker and I want to darken this so I'm gonna go off do that and I will also do my brow I don't have anything new for my brows and then I will be back okay so I finished powdering I've done my eyebrows and this all looks really really nice my face is a bit darker now because I've used that darker mineral powder foundation and the concealer looks really nice so have a look it looks really really good it doesn't look dry it just looks very natural of course you know i have the little lines and um we can't avoid that let's be real and there will always be some product settling in it if someone tells you that it won't it's lying to you it's just physically impossible if you have a crevice in there something will get in there but it's not what I mean that you can still see the lines, which there is no makeup or cosmetic that will get rid of them. But it is not, you know, like gathering in lines, like some concealers, you actually see lines of gathered product in there. So now it looks really good. The foundation looks lovely as well, like I said, because I've put another layer on it. It's a bit... Um, makeup here but honestly I'm obviously looking really closely at myself if someone was looking at you from the normal distance it looks really nice okay I also have a new bronzer and it well it is not new new to me and this is again from Huda and it's the glowish in zero to medium I only bought little one because I wasn't sure about the color so here it is, it's one of those marbled ones, looks really nice, but now I think this might be too light for me, but that's just as well. I've bought a little one, so when I don't have fake tan, I can use it then. The only problem is, it's very hard to stick your brush in a tiny thing, although this is small brush, this is Rifa 05. Oh, this is really nice and smooth. I don't know if that has any type of glow or it's completely matte. It is not completely matte. It has very, very subtle glow. Not like a highlighter, but it's not like flat matte. And yes, it is too light. I can't really see it very well. I like the color of it. It's more of a... On a cooler side so brilliant for like sculpting your cheeks but it is definitely too light for me but it is very very smooth really nice blends really nicely I like it can you see it's quite cool so it's very nice for sculpting your cheeks not use it all over as your bronzer okay i don't have anything new for my cheeks i will use the beauty bakery cotton candy champagne palette i love this palette um and i usually well not usually i mix them all or i mix the darker one with the lighter one whatever i fancy at the time Sigma F53 Air, the blush contour brush. Love them because they already have like building almost highlighter. Now this I am so excited about. So Pat McGrath 
just came out with her The Love Collection, I suppose for Valentine's Day. And there is three palettes in this collection, three palettes with six eyeshadows. I chose the Iconic Infatuations because it has mauves in it. So that's the box, it's just gorgeous. I will show you the palette inside in a minute. And I also got the Fetish Ice Longwell Liquid Eyeshadow. And what is mine in? Luna Rose. I wanted, to, um, I think it was some champagne something, but it was sold out. But it's like a rose gold. I will swatch it all for you. Let's have a look at this palette. Oh my God, this palette, I am so excited. <laughs> It's just so gorgeous. Look at it. And these palettes are so much more cheaper than her big ones in those heavy um, plastic. This is just so me in a winter. So let me quickly swatch them for you. I am not sure if these eyeshadows are existing ones that are in other palettes. I feel like I've seen these before. Uh, but I'm not sure. Right, let me just swatch the... So you get three mattes and three shimmers, which I love. It's just even, because sometimes in Pat McGrath's you get too many shimmery ones and just like one or two mattes. Okay. Here they are. absolutely gorgeous I love every single one of them and let's now swatch the liquid one oh. Oh. look at it I am so excited I haven't used it I've swatched the eyeshadows when I first got it but I never swatched that liquid one oh my goodness that is just the most amazing Right, I can't wait, let's do it. So as usual with Pat McGrath, you can buy the whole collection, which comes with the three palettes. It has quite a few of these in different colors and there is a couple of lipsticks as well, I think, and maybe a blush, I can't remember now. Um, or you can buy everything individually. So that's what I did. And a lot of things were already sold out. I got it directly from Pat McGrath's website. If you are in the UK, you don't have to worry. You don't pay anything extra. The shipping is usually free as well. There is no duty or taxes to pay. You can get Pat McGrath now in UK, on UK Sephora website, but they don't have that yet. So if you want something brand new, you have to go to Pat McGrath's website. Okay, Rifa 01. And I will put the pictures of which eyeshadow I'm using. Apply this. There are names of those eyeshadows on the back, but I can only tell you what the middle ones are called because <laughs> you can't get that wrong. But I never know with the other ones on either side if they are backwards or which way. So I've already put pictures up here to show you what I'm using. gorgeous with the same brush I'm going to this mid mauve and start shading my outer portion of my eye this one is tiny bit patchy that can happen with um, with Pat McGrath's shadow. I wonder if this is that uh, cream to powder because these really need a lot of blending. See, it's a bit patchy. And I think that natural bristle brushes like Rifa are are the best for using the, these eyeshadows. 
Now, so many of these shimmers that I could use, but I think I will use the lightest one and then I will top it off with this because I could do it other way around. I could do now. Let's use it on its own. Let's see what it's like on its own. Heaven. Beautifully creamy. You can always take a brush and spread it more with a brush. Oh, this is beautiful. I'm actually glad I chose that color because the lighter one, the champagne one, could have been too light. I didn't want this to be too rose goldy, if you know what I mean, but this is perfect. I want to top it off with one of the shimmery ones, but I don't know which one. Let me actually do it on my hand. I will do three swatches with this and I will top each one with those shimmering colors and we will see what it looks like. So I'll be back in a sec. So here they are. I've topped this cream eyeshadow with each of the shimmery ones from the palette. I have no words. Gorgeous. I think I might put the top one on, which is like a rose gold, and then the lightest one maybe in the corner. Let's do that. This is beautiful. This palette really needed a video of its own. Okay, I'm taking Holo P66 into the darkest color and just apply it in that reverse seven right on the outer V. Rifa 15 blend the edges BK Beauty 209 I'm going into that second darkest Rifa 12 I'm going to that lightest matte buff it out then I'm going to go to the darkest one and apply it just on the outer V outer lower lash line I'm going to take Rifa 03 and apply a bit of this on a brush because this doll foot is a bit too thick and apply it in a, in a corner and a bit on the lower lash line. And mascara. I have a new mascara. I think I've spoken to you about it in one of my vlogs. It is not new, but new to me. This is the Shallow Tilbury Pillow Talk Push-Up Lashes. So the story is when Shallow Tilbury came out with the very first mascara, it had different brush. It was like a, almost not a plastic brush, but like a natural brush. I didn't like that mascara at all. It was smudging, it was crumbling. And I never have problem with mascaras doing that. So I thought, well, let me try this one. So let's do it. This one's got sort of flattish plastic brush. So I'm going, it's so difficult to show you. 
can you see it is flat so I'm going with the edge first and that is looking okay looks like he does give a bit of length and now with the flat bit I am going to see that deposits much more mascara so that will make them thicker but hopefully not clumpy that is good I will also leave you in the description box info on how this mascara wore throughout the day if it's smudged and how easy it was to take off at night as well. Yeah, you can definitely build it up but be careful. Start with the edge because that won't deposit as much mascara at first because once you've deposited loads of mascara they will clump then go with the flat edge, deposit a bit more mascara, then back to the edge and brush it through. And that way they shouldn't clump. It's nice. Well, that's good, isn't it? So that's the finished look. I love this palette so much, I knew I would as soon as I opened it. The mascara is fabulous, but you need a bit of patience with it. It's not just slap happy. Like I said, start with the edge to define your lashes, then with the flat bit, deposit a bit of mascara, then with the edge brush it through and keep building it up. And that way they are not clumping and they look really good. I don't have anything new for my lips because this is quite mauve I will use the NYX Los Angeles Los Angeles lip liner Delilah lipstick in Whisper And then I could put some sort of gloss on it. Okay, my lovelies, so that's the finished look. I love everything that I've tried today. Love the hourglass foundation, love the duo concealer. I like that glowish skin tint, which I might buy full size of. I like the Huda bronzer. It's just this one is a bit too light for me, so I need darker one. Absolutely love this and this. And Charlotte's mascara. So all in all, this was very successful haul. Like it all, I would recommend it all. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and stay fabulous. Bye!